The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 873 7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Sorry I couldn't make it yesterday, folks, and a major emergency popped up. Nothing uh, of, um, of of health nature, but a family nature. Uh, anyway, let's take a look here at this uh, Canadian dollar. Uh, as you can see, folks, we had a 135 pattern form up there since August and December. We went down to the 78% retracement today. Any, any move below that, you can see, will send us down to that 1.618 expansion down there at the uh, 128.70. That's down about three handles, around $3,000. So that's a, uh, a pretty big move if it gets to that point. But we are at major support here at that 78% level. There is a small Gartley there, as you can see. That's why it's so very, very important. And remember, when these patterns fail, they usually go to the next uh, pattern, the next ratio. And on this particular chart, you're looking at that big A, B, C, D from way back in May, down and up, uh, down into July, up into September, right at a 61% retracement, and then down to the what we think is going to be the 1.618 expansion number at 128.7, and that's very close to a double bottom that we had at 128, you know, way back in uh, late September. So the the uh, Canadian dollar is under pressure. It could hold here, but the odds are now it might not hold very long. That's uh, really what we're watching. By the way, today we're going to have Tim Bost as our guest, Financial Cycles Weekly, out of uh, out of. Florida, so that'll be good. And then on Monday, not Friday, but on Monday, Tom Hugard will be uh, uh, enjoying this from Denmark, where he's on holiday with his lovely family. I uh, can't do it today, but we will do it Monday uh, with him, so we'll be watching it. He has been uh, doing very little trading over the holidays. The only thing he's been involved in has been the British pound, which has been a, a pretty nice uh, move from those levels that we looked at. Let's take a quick look at the pound because we're down in an area today. In fact, the lows that we hit today were spot on. Let's just get this up here. You'll see here that uh, this is the pound over the last, uh, you know, five trading days. You know, we had that high up there uh, last Thursday. Uh, that went to 135.11. The, the fib number we were looking at was 134.65. And now we, we covered it this morning, folks, uh, at that 130.60 level. And uh, we're, we're waiting to see a retracement from this. You can see the ABCD leg right here. Uh, the only rally that we had here was that 382 rally that happened on December the 16th. You know, the thing only rallied, you know, like 90 pips and then down it went again. So it's very, very oversold. The question is, is whether it's going to have any type of a bounce or not. But that level we're looking at, at that 130.20, was pretty much spot on of that ABCD. And as I mentioned, uh, we covered for the 24-7 folks at one 130.57 to 130.60. So that's what we're watching as we as we look at this British pound. Um, this is, uh, you know, these these markets, folks. People, so several people have asked me to comment on the volatility. There is no volatility, other than what you see what we had last uh, December the 12th when we had that big news announcement about the election in uh, the UK. There's no volatility. I mean, the, the S and P yesterday was in a six point range the whole day. Now we know that no volatility. Volatility leads to big volatility, so you're going to start to, to have it happen very quickly. Now, whether it happens next week, which is going to be a shortened week because the you know Christmas Eve, not many people are there on the 24th. That's Tuesday, okay? So many people are taking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They're taking a whole week off, and that would be my first choice if I had that choice. But we get to talk to you folks here every day except Christmas Day, so I will take advantage of that. I'm very blessed to do what I do, folks. Believe me, I get a little tired once in a while, and sometimes 
Sometimes I have uh, my little, uh, uh, my patience wears a little bit thin, but uh, I really enjoy my time here at TFNN. It is really a lot of fun to, to converse with these folks, especially in the Tiger Den, because guys, they got some really smart people in there. I mean, uh, all you have to do to prove it to yourself is go in there and spend a week, and you'll see uh, the types the things that the folks look at and the numbers that they're looking at and the, all the other things that we're watching, you know, to make them, uh, you know, really nice, uh, you know, trading uh, opportunities. All right. Now, here's one that is very, very important. This We're going to go across the pond now and we're going to go over to Germany and we're going to take a look at the German bun. Okay, now you'll notice here the big gap that we had in May and June. That's when they switch over to the June contract. Okay, that's all that is. Is they're making that the difference there. But the high was made. Then you can see the the gap where the September contract was, and now we're going to have one for the December contract pretty soon. But this one right now is up to date. We hit the exact 382 retracement last week, and we've been going down ever since. That means higher interest rates, not lower interest rates. And even our bonds have been whacked really hard, too. So th this interest rate uh, tapioca that they've been trying to feed us, I think is going to be uh, not be too palatable uh, in the long run. So I don't believe the, the process of negative interest rates. I, I listened to someone on Bloomberg yesterday uh, from uh, from Norway, uh, where they, excuse me, from Sweden, where they have negative interest rates, negative mortgage, folks. You just move into a house. You don't even have to have a mortgage. I mean, this is really, uh, it's, it's, it's a phenomenon that we've not seen, you know. Oh, wait a minute. Terry's saying that Sweden is giving up on their zero interest rate experiment. Well, that would be about right. It just doesn't make any common sense, folks. I mean, our business is difficult enough, but when it starts fooling around with common sense, you know, you know, you gotta, you gotta really pay attention to that. One of my favorite books, and I've mentioned this many times, is Andrew, uh, 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 Bernard Baruch's book, his autobiography called My Own Story. And in there, he talks about, you know, the one of the greatest scams in the market is to inflate something to a very, very high price and you get people to buy it. He didn't say people, but he said, well, he said, you'll get suckers to buy it all the way down thinking they're getting good value. And uh, his, my favorite quote in there is, don't be concerned on the return on your money. Money, be concerned on the ret return of your money. So protect your principal. That's the main thing. So uh, common sense is not very common. You're absolutely correct, Marshall. You know, folks, if you want to read somebody who is uh, incredibly, uh, incredibly, incredibly bright, is Samuel Clemens, you know, Mark Twain. Read his stuff. My gosh. I mean, that guy had so many wonderful things to say and uh, just spot on. But, uh, you know, it's really, really spectacular to, to read some of the things. Of course, our, our friend Benjamin Franklin uh, was also extremely bright. Let's move over here to a couple of things. Since we were talking about the bonds, I just wanted to show you here. This is the chart that we're looking at here in the TBT, which is the reverse of the bonds. In other words, if you're long TB, you are short the bond. So, you know, you can see we, we had a little bit of a rally here. It looks like it's going to stand up to the 129 level. But uh, it looks like on the longer term chart, we've seen these bonds, you know, run into a great deal of trouble. And that appears to be, you know, why they're, you know, acting so very, very poorly. We'll take a break and I'll post the, the chart for you when you get back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have a caller on the line. John, are you there? Larry, uh, I am. Uh, thanks for taking the call. I wanted to wish uh, you and your uh, family happy holidays coming up. Yeah, we're all prepared for it, that's for sure. Excellent. I hope you too. Um, how is your mother? I thought, how is your, uh, how, how, I thought it would get down to serious business just one last time ahead of the first of the year okay. and ask if you could just assist, or not assist, but share your view here on uh, copper futures. Um, they've been in rally mode. We've talked about this uh, previously. Copper has uh, made a high up near 283 and then gone sideways right up against those highs uh, a couple of days now. And I wonder if you just shed some light using your charts, be it daily or hourly or whatever you're using, uh, to try to provide some guidance as to answering this question. Is copper poised to extend the rally right here right now uh, or is there uh, logic in thinking it's likely to pull back much deeper well john i posted the chart and as you can see from the last two weeks you know we've been really a straight up move from 262 to 282 uh, the target we were looking at here was around 285 so we're within about two cents of that but we haven't backed off at all i mean it's just been you know straight up so it's extremely overbought what I would be watching is I would be watching for a potential pullback back to those old highs at maybe 272. In other words, back off about 10 cents. 
And uh, you know, if it does that, you know, it might, maybe the, I, it, that wouldn't even be a 382 retracement of the move from back in September. So this is a very bullish chart, and uh, it doesn't take much for it to accelerate more. Because if we got above the 288 level, wow, you could be looking at uh, 325, 340 per pound in copper. So it does look very bullish. But right now, I, I can't touch it because it's extremely overbought, and we're ho hovering against that uh, target level of 285. We're only a penny and a half away and for you know mathematical purposes that's pretty much spot on so I'd, I'd be waiting for a uh, a pullback or looking from the short side that's what i'd be wishing looking at for copper right now all right i appreciate that um you know i uh, i might uh, uh move on just to a follow-up topic it kind of goes uh it, it uh, skirts around something you used to do earnestly that you became famous for, and that was making your trade of the year um, uh, ideas. And, uh, and of <laughs> yeah. course, I know you retired from that, but uh, as you scan your charts, and, I, you know, of course, you do your 24-7 newsletter, mm -hmm. uh, but so, so in the context of doing all that work, is there uh, one market or two as we head into the new year and, uh, you know, start uh, January 5th, that looks like mm -hmm. there's good uh, reward potential you see setting up, you know, be it long something or short something. John, there sure is. In fact, I was asked that question uh, yesterday, a day before yesterday from one of our long-term listeners, and uh, he asked if I was going to do a trade of the year this year, and I said, well, I don't think so, because uh, I hadn't done it. The reason why I quit it, John, is because, because uh, you know, it was, a, it was a negative environment for me, because uh, I, I had, I don't know if you fought, well, most of you did, but for the first 11 years, we had 11 winners in a row. We never really had any losers. I mean, some, sometimes the market would just go sideways, and then we would, you know, get stopped out with a break-even or a very, very small loss, but there was nothing disastrous about it. But the energy that I had to expend to get to that point, John, was a pain in the kabuki. And so that's that's <laughs> why I that's why I quit doing it. Let's let's just show you. If I had to do a trade of the year, this is the one that I would do. I know it's it's crazy and no one's going to be believe you, but this is the one I got to be looking at. This is the Nasdaq. You'll notice at the 1.618 a retracement up there at 86.40, the expansion at 86.41. Uh, I think that's going to be the high, and I don't know where it's going to go from here, but uh, open interest dropped on December 18th. Uh, that was short. I mean, just stop and think of this thing. This is going up and making a 1.6618 expansion, and they can't get new players to come into the market. Well, they're getting players to come into the S&P in record quantities, and also uh, in the Russell they are, but not in the Dow Jones and not in the Nasdaq. Uh, those are those are lagging badly. But just this pattern itself, uh, this is a daily pattern. You know, going back, or excuse me, four-hour pattern going over the past, uh, you know, four four weeks. But uh, this is a really a, a perfect. I mean, it, I don't know if it's gonna, if it's going to work or not. All I know is if you see a, if you see a trade of uh, 86.45, you're out. You know, and so you would be basically not risking very much at all and you can see the profit potential on this on this could be uh you know be pretty good now if i did a, a, a trade of the year i would also include the russell the dow jones the uh uh, uh the nasdaq and the and the uh, and also the s p 500 so that you could get a broad idea then i would i would bring in some of the things that uh people look at like uh, the, the advanced decline line and things like that new highs to new lows just to see if it lines up but just that particular pattern would be enough for me to uh to be doing it in fact if you if you turn that Upside down, I you know I would be a buyer. You know that's uh, that's what I try right, to do. Right, when I look at right, those right. I hear you. Larry. Thank you so much once again. Happy holidays, and because we've been dealing with monetary debasement, that twenty that I normally slipped in the mail to you, I've upgraded that to a fifty. So thanks so much. I, that's 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 uh, that's Mexican pesos, right, John? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye okay. now. You bet. Okay, folks, let's take a uh, – what we want to do now is to take a look at the uh, the U.S. dollar index. Someone asked if we have a Gartley there, and uh, let me just get this up here and talk to you about this because there's a lot, a lot of stuff on the Internet about the collapse of the U.S. dollar. 
Now, you notice here we've had a nice correction in the U.S. dollar since September. Uh, we're making a nice ABCD pattern. And if you look at it closely, just go over to May to June, and you're going to see that same correction happening. We're, we're happening, having it now. So right now, now, the line in the sand is going to be around 96 in the uh, in the U.S. dollar. If we get below 96, then this whole this whole thing with the U.S. dollar you know, might be over. And remember, remember, 99.40 was a 61% retracement on the weekly chart. You know, we pointed that out, you know, half a dozen times on this show, plus in the newsletter, I try to do it every two weeks to look at the long-term weeklies. And so those numbers are pretty much uh, put in the in the play. So where we are now, 90 below 96 in that U.S. dollar, I think, you know, there's going to be trouble. Look at it closely, folks. That that, that number that we hit just the other day, that was last Friday, was exactly 78% of the low that we made on June 24th. It was 50% of the low back in January. You know what I mean? So these are these are really important numbers here, and it's held. So, And the euro's backed off, off, and the pound is certainly backed off. The pound's down 400 pips so from the high. So those are the things that we're keeping an eye on here today. We're going to have Tim Bost as our – Tim Bost, I'm sorry, Tim – no, no excuses. Tim Bost will be our guest from Financial Cycles Weekly, will be our guest uh, at the break coming up here. And he always has some great information. He's got some slides that he wants to share with us. And so we'll be looking forward to that. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we're talking with Tim Boss of Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, are you there? I, I am indeed, Larry. How are you today? I am good, my my friend, when I posted up your first chart here today, I noticed in the upper left-hand corner it said find, uh, Fibonacci Galactic Trader, and uh, we know you, you and I both know that we lost Jeannie Long, you know, on Monday. You know, uh, right, she was the, right. the start of that, and uh, I really, I have one great memory of uh, uh, Jeannie Long, and that was oh my, 25 years ago, she was having a Christmas party down in Fort Lauderdale, where, where her and Robert Krauss were living, uh -huh. and so I went down to spend a couple of days with them and uh, there was a man there from Canada named William Drummond the Drummond Drummond geometry guy right right and 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 he was there and Tim I've met some really interesting people in this business but boy let me tell you he was off the charts I had never met anybody with that much confidence and overextension of what his abilities were in my whole life if you know what I'm trying to say I mean he said he said things that couldn't possibly be true I mean like the quantity of things he was trading 10,000 treasury bonds at a time you know okay. <laughs> I mean I, I just I just shut up and let him talk because I knew that I was going to get in trouble if I did anything other than than that and uh any, <laughs> anyway i shared I, sh I shared it with Jeannie afterwards and she said yes she said i saw you over there smiling anyway uh did, do you have any uh, interesting stories of uh, Jeannie that you'd like to share with us i mean that's putting you on the spot a little bit oh, but well you know we, we had I, many I, many lovely encounters and it, uh in fact uh i i guess it was about uh, seven eight years ago I, I had a chance to sit down with her and talk about uh, how she got started uh, uh, with uh, astrological studies and and with market studies, uh, and it was a very fascinating tale. Uh, but I first encountered Jeannie uh, back in the in the mid '80s uh, when I attended a, a conference uh, and uh, connected with one of my mentors, Olivia Barclay uh, from England. I had uh, studied horary astrology and medieval techniques with her, and uh, we had uh, gotten together at this conference in uh, Connecticut and uh, it, it, as is the case with many affairs like that there are multiple speakers going on and I said Olivia who, who are you going to go here next and she said oh I'm definitely going to go here Jeannie Long she's a fellow Brit and people pay her thousands of pounds for her advice on the markets using astrology. And I said, well, i got to hear this. <laughs> and so Olivia and I sat together and listened to Jeannie talk about uh, trading gold uh, with astroanalysis. And uh, that was really an event that opened my eyes to the potential uh, in this whole field. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She was not only was she beautiful, she was a really a beautiful human being. She was just very, Indeed. very... Real Always first kind class. and generous and, 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 and yeah. very, very gracious on all occasions. Yeah. yeah. What, what are you seeing in this S&P chart with the Pluto resistance and the Mars trend and all these galactic lines? you want to explain to the folks what you're looking at here? Uh, what we're looking at here, uh, and, and these are, are planetary price line projections with uh, of the software that uh, Jeannie and uh, Robert Krauss uh, uh, developed uh, some years back called the Fibonacci Trader Galactic Trader. Uh, the Galactic Trader component adds the ability to put in planetary factors on a chart, which is something that I rely on a great deal. Uh, the more or less diagonal red lines are uh, the increments of the movement of Mars. And what we can see is that uh, the S&P has been tracking along Mars channels pretty nicely here over the last few months uh, and is continuing to do so. What we're looking at are the horizontal lines on the chart, which uh, represent the positions of Pluto. And uh, we have seen some significant support back in uh, 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 early October on that uh, Pluto line. Uh, and uh, we're uh, seeing that uh, then defining a horizontal trading channel uh, between a potential uh, Pluto resistance. We're projecting a little bit into the future. 
future there uh, with a, a potential on that Pluto line of hitting uh, 32.2350 and uh, support and the, and the increment below that at uh, uh, 30.7350. Uh, so uh, that's that's kind of the, the trading range that we're looking at right now. We are anticipating a potential uh, trading top coming in here uh, fairly shortly, and so that's why we're looking at these uh, planetary price lines to determine potential levels of uh, astrological resistance along the way. Wow. This sure is interesting. I, I notice there's, there's a lot of gaps on this chart. Is that the? Uh, that's just because you're looking at the S&P cash. Is that correct? That's right. S&P cash uh, on, on uh, okay. these are daily price bars, and so we we get some, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> rather than uh, tracking the the contract, which is a more continuous flow. Okay. Now, is there any any particular s significance to the top blue line there, where it says Pluto resistance? Because I saw Pluto support hit it spot on. I just wondered if that was uh... right. We have not tested that resistance zone yet, but that's the next. Uh, these are our 24th harmonic planetary projections, uh, and so uh, that would be the next uh, logical level for Pluto to start factoring in in a significant way. And we, as I say, we've not uh, hit resistance there yet, so uh, we may get to test that. It may back off before it gets that far, in which case we'd start looking at uh, at other planetary configurations to get confirmation there. Do you, do you use any other any other tools like uh, any t t uh, typical technical analysis in your uh, in your oh, approach? Absolutely, you know, yeah. you, you've done. You we, we, we combine a lot of, of uh, tools, uh, some, some GAN techniques, uh, uh, take a look at Elliott wave counts, uh, uh, and mm -hmm. of course Fibonacci projections and uh, retracements as well. Uh, and, uh, and in addition to that, uh, when it comes to trade setups, uh, you know, we're looking at very, very simple indicators like moving average crossovers and so forth. Very good. Now, when you when you when you do your because you've done very well for the, um, uh, the the timer digest, you've been in that rankings quite a bit. The, mm -hmm. When you when you do a technical analysis, what comes first, Tim, the astrology or the technical analysis? That's one of the questions someone's <laughs> asking us. Well, that's a great great question, and actually. Uh, because we have an astrological bias, uh, we, first of all, when, when we're, we're, we're tra trading primarily individual equities here. Uh, so mm -hmm. and in doing so, we're concerned with stock selection, and we use an astrological filter first uh, to simply narrow the, the playing field a bit uh, in terms of the astrological parameters that suggest we might have uh, potential trading candidates. Uh, once mm -hmm. we've done that, we've got, uh, on a week-to-week -week basis, a, a universe of about 75 Five to 100 particular uh, stocks that we're looking at. Uh, and then we go back and look at the technicals. And we also do a quick fundamental scan. We like to have uh, uh, stocks uh, that have companies behind them that are actually in business. <laughs> and so uh, we have mm -hmm. a little bit of a fundamental bias there as well. And we want to look and see are there earnings reports or other events of that sort coming up you know, from that fundamental dynamic. So we're really combining technicals, fundamentals with the astro analysis. We begin with the astrology. We look at the other uh, factors then to filter things out, and then based on that, if, if a particular uh, uh, equity looks uh, uh, fundamentally sound and it looks uh, like good timing from a technical standpoint, we go back and then do another astrological pass uh, to refine our tools in terms of uh, the precise timing and price points and so on. Uh, so it's really a circular process, mm -hmm. I guess is the best way to describe it. That makes good sense. One other question that someone's asking is, do you use the date of origination of the corporation as part of your analysis? Uh, we the use uh, the yeah rather than the incorporation date per se, we use what we call the first trade date, uh, and uh, this is the the uh, date that the stock was first publicly traded. That's a significant time. Wow, very good. All right, well, stay with us, Tim, and we'll look at the second chart that you've got okay. for us. We've got Tim Bost on the line at Financial Cycles Weekly. We'll be right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. 
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Tim Boss. Tim, do you want to tell us what you're looking at on the uh, second uh, Right. Chart that uh, we have here. This is a chart of our uh, current astro cycle projections, and we uh, uh, rework this chart oh, about once a month, every six weeks, something like that, uh, to try to get a feel for uh, what the cycle analysis says about uh, uh, upcoming probabilities for the markets, and then we coordinate that with the astrological dynamics uh, that are coming up. Uh, the black line here is simply the S and P based on uh, closing prices and a, a line chart. Uh, the red line on the chart is our cycle uh, projection. This is a composite cycle uh, based on uh, 28 of the, the, uh, of the top cycles we've been able to identify so far with the S&P. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, what we've seen here is pretty good correspondence. We did get a divergence uh, uh, between the actual price movement and the cycles uh, uh, back around uh, the first few days of, of December here. And uh, we've got some mm -hmm. unanticipated bullishness going on. But what we're looking at is point A on the chart coming up uh, this weekend on the 21st. Mm -hmm. That'll be this Saturday, we have uh, the solstice coming up. It's the winter mm -hmm. solstice in the northern hemisphere, the summer solstice in the southern hemisphere, a very important uh, date uh, there. And uh, uh, we're anticipating a, a trading top coming in uh, in connection with that, which means we could see mm -hmm. it a top hitting as early as tomorrow mm -hmm. on Friday the 20th or uh, waiting until uh, Monday the, the 23rd uh, and still correspond uh, pretty closely mm -hmm. with that uh, timing date uh, from the astrological perspective. Uh, then we're looking for a move uh, downward into the solar eclipse coming up on the 26th of December. And then finally at point C, uh, we've got uh, the lunar eclipse two weeks after the solar eclipse. Uh, this is uh, going to be a very, very powerful event there as well. Is that, that has some effect with the January effect that we usually see every year. Uh, well, not every year. We see it in quite a few years in the stock market where the small caps gain on the large caps. 
Exactly. Yeah, that yeah. that uh, yeah. we always uh, pay attention to that January effect when it does occur. Uh, and uh, yeah. uh, one, one of the things that's interesting about that uh, particular date on the 10th of January uh, is that not only do we get a total lunar eclipse, but we also have uh, the planet Uranus making a direct station, which is a pretty powerful signal of t potential turning points in the markets uh, around that mm -hmm. uh, time as, as well. So that combination uh, kind of lights mm -hmm. that date up uh, pretty strongly from the astro trading perspective. Uh, we're going to be paying mm -hmm. close attention to, to that time frame. Well, anybody that's been uh, living through the last seven or eight decades certainly will remember January 8th from our friend down in Tupelo, Mississippi, that was born that day, Elvis Aaron <laughs> Presley. Exactly. You know, Tim, <laughs> Tim, on point A there, we have a really interesting uh, chart this week from one of our friends over in Las Vegas showing that uh, the times that the market has topped on the 19th of the month in the last uh, four trading year, four, four quarters, I believe, that uh, he really? sent us. I post, I, oh, yeah, it was amazing. It was either a top or a bottom on the 19th of the month. And what's today? Oh, today's the 19th Hello. of the month. <laughs> I don't know if that means anything, but it was a really interesting chart that uh, that he posted. And I, I, the fact is, at the end of the show, I'll probably repost it to let the folks see it again. But and he does a lot of great research, but it follows along. I'm interested in that divergence there because, you know, since August, this thing has been pretty much spot on. I mean, you know, it's just been probably a correlation of uh, probably better than 75 percent just eyeballing it. And then the, since uh, uh, early December, it has diverged a little bit. Now, do you see inversions in this type of a thing very often or does that never happen? Uh, well, I can't say it never happens, <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah, well, and the question is not how, how often is often. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But yeah. I mean, is, is it unusual to see something like this? No, we 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 will often see inversions, and uh, uh, we uh, try to factor that in with other planetary uh, understandings. And for example, the previous chart we looked at with the uh, the S and P tracking. Uh, that uh, uh, Mars uh, trend line. Uh, what we're saying here is that Mars is taking over, uh, you know, with the astro cycle short term. Uh, but we do believe the solstice is going to be more uh, powerful than that Mars trend, and so that's why we're looking uh -huh. at a potential top coming in here. Okay. Now the next chart that we're going to be looking at is probably going to be taking a little bit of explanation. That is the work of. Uh, W. D. Gann. This was his uh, master wheel, isn't it? Uh, that right. Yeah. His his master wheel, and uh, yeah, he had a lot of different uh, tools that he developed. Of course, the uh, the square of nine uh, uh, grid uh, in in the middle to determine the exact price points. Uh, and he was mm -hmm. very interested in the angular relation angular relationships uh, uh, between specific prices in the markets, but also coordinated those price levels with specific calendar dates. And this is what we wanted to point mm -hmm. out uh, with this kind of mm -hmm. close-up of a section of, of uh, one of his wheels uh, that he used uh, with his master wheel here. And we circled mm -hmm. this at the bottom of the diagram there. It, it notes uh, uh, December 21st. It correlates with 270 degrees uh, in uh, the zodiac, uh, which uh, corresponds with uh, zero degrees of uh, Capricorn uh, in, the, in the zodiac. So uh, all those were factors that Gann was using uh, to determine key points uh, in the year in which the was a higher likelihood of market inflection points. And he paid mm -hmm. particular attention to the four cardinal points, uh, which mark the beginning of the four seasons of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. We have in, uh, the summer solstice and the, and the uh, winter solstice in uh, June and December. Uh, and then we also have the fall and spring equinoxes uh, in March and September. So these quartering points in the year were very, very important in Gann's calculations. Uh, and uh, we wanted to point that out that uh, coming up just in a couple of days here, uh, or right in time uh, for the end of this week, we have uh, that December uh, 21st date that Gann paid a lot mm -hmm. of attention to. Mm -hmm. Well, you've, you've shown three dates here, December 21st, December 26th, and January 10th. So that we'll be watching those, you know, very, very closely for, for, you know, that's something I think that you've done pretty good. Now, you're going to have, let's just bring this up so the folks can see it. You're going to have a free webinar coming up here, I think, and I think we're right. interested yeah, the, in that. We're, we're going to be doing this uh, Monday uh, afternoon of next week on the 23rd as we get ready for a little mm -hmm. holiday break. Uh, we're going to be a good point to review what's uh, working now in astro trading. It's a free webinar. You can sign up by going to bit.ly slash astro now 
and that's a case sensitive uh, web address there. So uh, A S T R O need to be capitalized and then N O W in lowercase in order to get you to the right page for the free registration for that event. And the bit.ly, is that lowercase also? Right, that's all lowercase. Okay, so, okay, okay, great. Well, exactly. those of you that are listening, you can certainly check in at the den here to get that address. And I want to thank you for coming on today and wish you and your bride a uh, wonderful holiday season down there. And Sarah, thank sort of, you. Are you going to do any, any you doing any traveling or are you going to stay home? Uh, actually, we are going to be in Charleston, South Carolina, uh, where my stepson and his family live. And we'll be uh, oh, uh, okay. and, and, and he always imports some Maine lobsters uh, for Christmas Day. Oh, uh, so sure. we, we, we traditionally be, have I'll a Christmas there, tradition. Come on yeah. down, <laughs> right? And uh, we, we have a little bit of lobster and Dom Perignon to bring in the uh, this uh, Christmas oh, season wow. with uh, in style. <laughs> so that's the way that's, we proceed. That's very good. Hey, so, listen, thank you for being with us. But Don Perignon was a house wine, man. That's uh, that's living the life, buddy. You're living the tall, well, the tall life Jeannie, now. Yeah, I had a, a great time with Jeannie Long one time. She was, was testing different vintages of Dom Perignon in her kitchen. And so we spent an afternoon, uh, you know, uh, right. discreetly sampling, shall we say. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we do the same thing here, but it's two buck chuck. <laughs> okay. All right, listen, holiday, thanks, Larry. Great yeah, to talk to you. Happy holidays to you. We'll be right back, folks. Eight seven. 7927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to uh, reflect a little bit on the information we got from our friend over in Las Vegas. It wasn't the 19th. It was the 3rd or the 5th of the month. I posted all of those lows, as you can see here, uh, June, August. You can see them circled with the volume and everything, but it was the 3rd or the 5th trading day of the month that uh, caused that. It wasn't the 19th. I, I had uh, misinformed you on that. I just wanted to double check to make sure that uh, I was able to uh, bring that to your attention to see, uh, you know, how things are going on. Um, I did talk a little bit about the Canadian dollar. I wanted to cover, cover that. I did, didn't get to talk too much about the notes and the bonds, but uh, this is what we've been waiting for. Uh, you know, we've seen a big top uh, 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 approach here, you know, way back here in August. We had the pullback to the 78% level in October. We had the 382 rally there in November. And you can see here the ABCD structure should take us down about eight handles. Now, we're down quite a bit because this was as of um, Sunday, and we've had uh, three days of a really strong downward action to get down to that uh, 55 level. So, uh, we're already heading towards, uh, you know, that number that we're looking at, which is right around 149 in the bonds. And that's very similar to what we're looking at uh, in that German bond. I know no one trades it here, but it's a big one, uh, you know, in the world events, especially over in Europe. And uh, we'll see. But I believe they're starting to realize now that negative interest rates is really not the way to go to clear all of our problems. Uh, I heard a gentleman speak uh, on uh, one of the educational channels about what China is doing, and uh, I wish I was able to remember the channel and stuff. So, uh, is the uh, yes, uh, Mr. Z? I do believe that the uh, Japanese yen dollar uh, is a short. So I, I really believe that it is still a short. Let me just get this up here, and I think I'll be able to bring it to your attention here because I think we're going to be heading down. We're not rallying, you see. That's the that's the thing. Off this last move we had, we got a little bit of a bounce. It did very little. Any move below 9,100 in that dollar yen or the yen, yeah, the yen dollar would certainly tell us that we're going to go lower. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude. We'll see you tomorrow, and may God bless.